video we're gonna watch also melee related is melee a good game i mean i have my clear answer to this one but let's check out the video a lot of people have said this is a good one has very very solid views so let's uh, check it out Recently, when compiling a list of my all-time favorite games, I ran into an issue when considering the potential inclusion of, ironically, one of my most played games of all time, Melee. How can that be an issue? I've spent thousands of hours playing this game, and it should be entirely obvious by now that I enjoy it a lot. So much so that I'd probably say it's the most fun game I've ever played within the rules and confines of a community-created rule set with a community-curated stage list. And while it's true that these are rules that anyone could come up with and play on, and certainly part of Melee's base game despite not being the default, could I really consider Super Smash Bros. Melee one of my favorite games of all time if I've only enjoyed such a small portion of it? And after some careful deliberation, I've decided that the answer in my opinion is no. no. All right, all right. This is a a hot, hot take already. Um, this is not what I expected at all. I have not seen this video. Uh, I've not seen this video. I do not expect that. I did not expect that at all. Uh, whoa. Uh, all right. So first of all, I feel like even if you only play a small small part of the game. The thing is, I do think one thing that makes some games really, really good is the fact that you can play the game in tons of different ways and you play it according to your own liking. That's For me, that's an advantage, not a disadvantage. I've never understood this like Sakurai type of mentality that you need to play the, the game the way I want you to play it. Don't play it the way you want. Play the way I want you to play it. I've personally never, ever understood that mentality. Uh, like, if you want to play Melee with, like, the competitive rules and stuff, and you really enjoy it, then that's good for you, right? Uh, then, of course, in terms of, like, is a game objectively good, objectively bad, a, a lot of times it will come down to, like, personal preference. But if you look at something like sales for Melee, it's a very clear indication that people, at the very least, highly like the game. And... The game series also continued strongly post melee in terms of like sales and stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, continue. Here's how I thought of it. Would you consider Dark Souls 2 one of your favorite games if you thought the PvP was incredible? Or for a more apt comparison, Fight Club PvP with set honor system rules stating that fights must always be 1v1 no healing items or Estus allowed, and that you must allow your opponent to buff before beginning the fight. Would you consider World of Warcraft one of your favorite games if the only part you enjoyed was min-maxing or twinking low-level characters to fight less geared players around your level? Or if you only enjoyed fair duels outside of Orgrimmar with no potions or buffs? I think most of you would agree with me that no. Despite enjoying these incredibly small parts of the game greatly, considering the game one of your favorites of all time because of these small parts would be... strange. Honestly, I 100% disagree here. 100%. We already, like, mentioned some, some of this uh, beforehand, but this small part of the game... Me, alongside with many other people, can testify to, like, the way Melee is played as a competitive game, even if you give someone 50 years, the game will still not be entirely sold. The game is so deep that even if it's just one portion of the game, it's so big and so deep that no human will ever truly, truly optimize the game to, you know, its full, full potential. So... I feel like only at first glance might it be like, oh, this is only like one small part of the game. But this small part is honestly bigger and deeper than, you know, a lot of like more, you know, single player games, for example, could ever be. Even if you do like everything in a single player game. Uh, so, yeah, th this feels very weird so far. 
and perhaps even requires you to ignore greater flaws with the games in more significant areas. So of course, the logical conclusion is to review and critique the game as a whole, 20 years late, with the added context of the modern world and the Smash games that came after it. The idea being that it'll get me lots of YouTube views and ad revenue, but also, maybe after giving the game as a whole an honest shot, scrutinizing every aspect of the game, I'll be able to confidently place it among my other favorite games, or instead find that the overall game hasn't held up well. Let's get started. I think it's important to begin with one of Melee's most unique, enjoyable, and to most spectators, coolest aspects, its movement. What? What is the movement, eyes? What is the movement? This is obviously universal in Melee. Wave dashing, wave landing, dash dancing, shield dropping, and even more niche options like moonwalking. It's all there regardless of which mode you're playing on or whether you're playing against a human or a computer. However, some of these techniques are difficult to learn, exacerbated by an almost entirely absent buffer system, making advanced techniques and even extremely basic actions like moving, aerials, and grounded moves extremely precise. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, buffer in a game refers to when the game reads your input before you can actually perform that move. For example, to perform a frame-perfect aerial in Brawl and Onwards, which have quite generous buffer systems, you simply press jump and the direction of the aerial you want to perform at the same time. Really no timing required. In Melee, however, the complete lack of buffer when doing this will result in either a smash attack or a jump with no aerial. The game doesn't keep track of what you input on your controller when it's in the middle of- uh, Honestly, like, I know it's a huge difference for people here, like how important is buffer should you have it how if so how much and so on but uh like even i'm not even sure how to how to approach uh yo uh maxwell thank for the raid buddy honestly the way i see it i feel like melee is more like real life when you do something in real life like there's no buffer in real life right you I just feel like melee is much more similar in that regard to like a, you know, a regular sport. And personally, I think, and of course I'm biased as everyone is in these type of topics, but I do feel like part of the charm, both as a player and spectator, is knowing like how precise and hard things are. And I, I do not, I have never understood why you can't enjoy a game unless you're able to do everything. I can play, you know, like football or basketball or table tennis for fun, and I don't know how to do every single thing, right? In fact, I'm, you know, objectively speaking, bad at these things, but I can still enjoy it because, you know, I find it fun, and even though I can't do like all these things that make, you know, the game super advanced, hard to learn, uh, and even harder to master, I can still enjoy it, both as, you know, playing it as a casual, and I can still enjoy it from, you know, a spectator point of view, seeing, you know, Ronaldo, Messi, or like LeBron James. Like, I, I can still enjoy the aspect because I know how damn hard and precise uh, it is what they're doing. I would never be like, yeah, basketball is a bad game because I can't do this thing LeBron does. And I really do feel like a lot of people, that's how they argue against Melee, that, oh, I can't do this thing that uh, Lefnor Mango is doing. So, yeah. It's not really that good of a game. I'm like, imagine if people said that about regular sports. Yeah, I can't do that thing Messi does. So the entry of barrier, too high. And yeah, it's a bad game. Like, now some people might be like, that's a little bit, you know, of an extreme take. But that's honestly what I feel like. The, the, that's like how a lot of people truly do argue. If new players can't do everything on command, then it's bad. And for me, and like, you know, for me and the people that started in like the early or relatively early era, like practically everyone played Melee as a casual game for years and still enjoyed it. Like I played Melee for almost three years before my first journey. 
Uh, Melee came out, came out in May 2002 in Europe, so not quite as early as like Japan and the US. And I had no idea about any secret tech like L Cancel, Wave Dash, Waveland, you name it. I had no idea about any of these things. And me, my friends, uh, my brothers, we, we all enjoy the game, right? As casuals, not knowing any of these things. I feel I I also truly feel since I did experience the game as a casual and then at the very very top I I like the more this topic gets brought up I feel like the most the people that complain the most about how precise mail is is not even the casuals themselves is people that are aware of the competitive scene maybe even part of the competitive scene and they feel that they don't want to put into like that much effort and they feel like on command they should be able to do you know everything I, I know it's not truly everything but i think you guys understand what i mean when i play with my like casual friends people are never like even when i started going to tournaments and sometimes they play like 2v1 against me or 3 versus 1 they were never like oh you know uh, i can't do this thing you do so the game sucks the, the people I truly hear that it's like, oh, like the lack of buffer destroys it for me. It's people that know about the competitive scene, maybe goes to tournaments, but they want to like almost get it handed to them. And I know some people will highly disagree and you're totally entitled to, but that's my personal experience at the very least. Now, I'm not saying my personal experience is like, you know, overriding everyone else's or anything, but that that's my take on it. I really don't feel like the casual casuals tends to be the people having the issue with melee being precise. The, the, like some of the you know shitters online might be like, oh, it's a glitch fest, ha 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 ha. But then they disregard like you know tech in brawl that might not have been inten intended either. So, yeah. So to summarize it, people that tend to have the most issue with melee being precise are people somewhat in the scene but they want to be able to do the things on the get-go not the casuals themselves they don't even know about the techs and they still you know enjoy the game a lot doing something else because of this frame perfect aerials in melee are truly frame perfect on behalf of the player and this isn't just limited to aerials either almost nothing has buffer in melee there's no leeway just you and your will to grind out the timing of the lag on every move you'll be performing to be done as fast as possible. The thing is also though, like a lot of scenarios in Melee, I feel like this is another misconception, is that you do not have to be frame perfect all the time, or not even close to all the time do you have to be frame perfect. Many, many times, you actually even want to delay your aerial to put yourself in a more, uh, uh, like, advantage uh, position right like if you combo someone a lot of the times you don't want to hit them like the first frame available when you can do an aerial like it's a huge misconception of course sometimes it occurs when you want to be frame perfect and then it's hard right but this this idea that you have to be frame perfect every single time you do something in melee no it's not the case have never been the case and never will be the case like a lot of times like let's say you want to hit someone with like a reverse backer if you hit them super early then you're going to be like further away from your opponent which makes the next move harder or sometimes even impossible to follow up with while if you delay it so you're like as close to the opponent as possible before you get to reverse it then you're going to be closer to them when you want to do like the next hit right so it's a lot of these scenarios when it's important to know when do I want to be like, you know, quick? When do I want to delay it? When do I want to be like in between? So yeah, massive misconception from like a lot of people that you have to be frame perfect at all times. This is quite understandably a turnoff. To and uh, actually when I mean like by frame perfect, then I refer to pressing the first frame available. You can be frame perfect while delaying because it's the the frame that is the most favorable for that position so in in that sense it can be frame perfect but then i mean then you can argue that like you know the ultimate for example have it in some scenarios too right to some people especially those used to the buffer systems in place from not only brawl onwards but the majority of video games today 
This is because game developers realized that pressing a button a few frames too early and having nothing happen would feel like complete shit to most players. I often see people coming into Melee from games like Smash 4 and Ultimate say the game feels clunky or unresponsive due to this, or that the game feels like it's eating their inputs. And starting out- I mean, I, I can understand this perspective. I can understand this perspective, especially with like more, as he said, more newer games have like a lot of buffer and stuff. But at least back back in the day, I really didn't feel like people talk talked about this much. But I guess it's because games didn't tend to be like that way. So more old school gamers probably grew up with a more, I'm not sure if I should say realistic feel, but that, that that's kind of what like I feel. Uh, but I could see if you grew up with games with like tons of buffer and then you don't have it. It probably feels weird that it eats your input. But I mean, yeah. As I said, like I'm also biased in this, but I feel like if you do, if you do it way too early, then to me it makes sense. Like imagine in real life you jump and then you try to jump before you land again. You're not gonna jump a second time, right? And I know, silly, silly metaphor, but it's the same concept pretty much. Uh, but I mean, I can see the other side. It makes it easier for people. Uh, but again, I feel like it's mainly from people that know about the competitive scene. Like these posts that was shown. Uh, but yeah, I feel like it's people mainly involved in the scene and uh, some type of direction. In 2016, I felt this way too. It was frustrating coming from the most recent Smash title, which was then Smash 4, to Melee. Funnily enough, despite being the fastest in the series, Melee's characters felt slow and cumbersome to control. In fact, the game kind of felt like complete ass, but I wanted to do cool stuff like I saw in GR Smash compilations, so I looked up tutorials and seriously practiced for months. I okay, I, I will say here as well. So, so this is what I believe to be one of the core issues. People, they, de they see the cool stuff, they can't do it on command, and then it feels complete ass. To me, and yes, of course I have a more like high level slash competitive, you know, mindset to all of this. But if I saw something cool and I could do it on command, then I, then I personally would be like, yeah, that wasn't cool at all. Imagine if I could just go outside right now and replicate what LeBron James does. I'll be like, why would I be like, sure, you can still be good in other ways, right? In terms of like mind games and stuff like that, right? But if I could do like tech skill like LeBron James going outside right now, why would I like find that cool? If anyone can do it from the get go or close to it, to me, the cool appeal disappears. The fact that people have to spend a lot of time and effort like the fact that I know that even if I spend a very, 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 very serious amount of time, I can't replicate like Ronaldo or Messi like that. The fact that I have to like keep working so hard to be able to do it, that's what I appreciate as a spectator for regular sports, knowing how hard it is. And I do feel like as someone that grew up watching regular sports and playing a lot of video games and then, you know, eventually competing in games, I think the, that correlation between regular sports and melee that's why like one of the reasons why i like melee if i could be like yeah i go out and i can do what ronaldo does or messi does i'll be like well, well why would that be cool for me if anyone can do it easily then it doesn't make it unique it doesn't make it cool in my mind I grew to enjoy the process of practicing and the visual improvement that came along with it but the word practice isn't exactly what most people have in mind when playing video games. <laughs> Especially a Nintendo game meant to be played by little kids. And it's not really a process some people want to go through just to be able to play the game at a level that even resembles competitive play. Even to those uninterested in playing like the pros, in the modern day, the lack of buffer is increasingly archaic and, frankly, unfun to work around at first. And if the game itself feels bad to play and you're uninterested in practicing to take advantage of what mechanics make Melee so special, 
What reason is there to play Melee when compared to games like Ultimate, which features far more characters, stages, items, collectibles, everything? I mean, I, I can totally understand the concept of like wanting to have more characters, but okay, again, this probably like separates some competitive players versus casual players. I do think casual players, the more characters, the better, right? But for me, I feel like that's looking at it from the perspective of quantity over quality. I will admit that some of the trash characters in Melee are too bad, but a lot of the good characters are much more uniquely designed than in Ultimate. And for me, I would rather have a smaller character pool, but more unique design than a lot of characters, but they're much more similar. They don't stand out as much. Uh, again, when it comes to quality, you can, you can try, you know, we can argue like, oh, this is more quality or that is more quality. Uh, so I, I do understand it's not like a 100% objective truth, but I do think most people would agree that a lot of like the top tiers in melee are more uniquely designed but sure in terms of quantity melee don't uh melee don't have that as ultimate does so that that is a fair point and i do think for for casual gamers that the quality is much more easy to not see but uh the quantity is very easy to see because you see the character select screen right so, so it's not something you really can miss target test Multi-man melee? If you feel or have felt this way about melee, I don't blame you. It's all completely valid criticism. Most games today have buffer and like I said before, lack of it can seem extremely dated. But behind its precise controls and lack of buffer lies something incredibly fun and rewarding. Movement that can be exciting, meaningful, and flashy all at the same time. Movement with such freedom and fine control that it far, far... Yeah, honestly, like, e even, like, that clip, that was sick, right? Moki is sick. Like, I feel, for me personally, I feel like I can't... I've never seen a clip like that in Ultimate personally where I'm like, damn, that is so sick. And this was just, like, one example. One example in Melee. But I guess it depends on what, what you personally want in a game. And I do think, like the freedom and how creative you can be in melee like to me that overrides like oh how many characters can you play and whether they are like an echo or not exceeds anything else in the series or even most video games for that matter if you've ever wondered why melee players stick to their game instead of hopping to the current smash brothers title this is one of the reasons. Here are a few examples of movement options that make Melee's movement so fluid, fun, and fucking crazy. Edge cancelling aerials, which is exclusive to Melee in Smash 64, allows players to completely cancel landing lag by landing near an edge and sliding off of it before the move's lag would have ended naturally, allowing follow-ups and combos that are otherwise impossible. That was Melee's sick. infamous wave dashing and wave landing are deep, multifaceted exploits that can be used in a myriad of ways, such as quickly sliding across the ground as a microspacing tool, mixing up basic movement, allowing characters to perform grounded moves while moving, closing or increasing distance while maintaining the same direction, or to quickly grab ledge, among other uses. Additionally, these techniques increase the depth of play with one of Smash Brothers' most distinctive aspects as a fighting game series, platforms. You can wave land on platforms to land on them more quickly than if you were to jump on them, wave dash off of platforms to escape pressure out of your shield, Quickly aerial at heights that would otherwise take much longer, or use it as a mix-up on your aerial, on top of much, much more. Wave dashing and wave landing also exist in Ultimate, the only other entry in the series where the directional air dodging that makes the technique possible exists. But the practicality of these two techniques have been absolutely gutted. 
as air dodging has added startup frames and becomes slower the more you use it. I feel like I feel like this, like adding wave dash and wave line and ultimate, it was kind of like, oh, we're giving you what you want, but not really. It, it was like an, probably an attempt to silence like some of the people that uh, criticized, you know, lack of uh, movement option and like you know special tech. But in reality, like it's so bad, especially wave dash that, I mean, it's there, but not really. It's not really there. Furthermore, the lag from landing by air dodging into the ground is massively increased and you can't wave dash or wave land off of platforms. All of this done in an effort to simplify the game, lower the skill ceiling, and narrow the gap between casual players and professionals. I will say I've never truly understood this narrow the gap between casuals and pros because the, the difference will still be so large. Like if you play Leo as a casual in Ultimate, it, like you're gonna be so overwhelmed that it doesn't matter how much they try to narrow the skill gap, which is part of the reason why I don't truly, truly understand it. Or let's say you played uh, Zero in Smash 4. As a as a casual, you're gonna get so absolutely destroyed. Even like a lot, like most of the pro players gets destroyed, uh, you know, by Zero in Smash 4 or like Leo in uh, in Ultimate. So some people probably do believe that when they narrow the the gap, that they are gonna have a chance. But let's be honest, they they won't. They won't. We'll explore the implications of Ultimate's more limiting platforms further in Part 3. A big part of what makes Melee feel so unique among the Smash games and its continued success and longevity as a competitive video game in my opinion, is just how fucking fast it is. Characters fall like they're made of lead, they attack fast, they run fast, and unlike Brawl, Smash 4 and Ult As I said, Melee, Melee's real life. When you're in the air, you fall fast. You can move fast, you can do whatever you want. Melee's life. Ultimate, they maintain their running speed when jumping. They don't just abruptly slow down when they leave the ground. With such mechanics in place, combos are able to be extended further and with way more creativity than in its sequels, as characters aren't limited by how quickly they can move to follow up. And when the game's natural speed is combined with the advanced movement options we went over earlier, players can get really creative. Melee's peak speed is absolutely unparalleled in the series because of the combined speed of its characters <laughs> and the movement capabilities the game's engine allows. And it's no surprise that YouTube commenters sometimes genuinely question if footage of competitive Melee has been sped up. That was actually funny when Ultimate came out. Uh, or no, not... No, not when Ultimate came out, but not too long afterwards. This maybe was like two or three months after Ultimate came out. And I streamed Melee. And I actually got these, uh, like a comment or two from Twitch chat. And I was like, wait, like, are you playing like, you know, faster like some faster mode because you're moving so fast so a lot of people actually do believe that this isn't to say that melee's movement isn't without flaws a part of melee's movement system that bothers me is something called dash back the act of going from a neutral standing position to turning around and dashing away at full speed simple right well no to do this and skip the relatively lengthy turnaround animation requires a one frame input on the player's controller from a neutral position past to the walking zone. And I let, let's be, I, I do agree that the that dash back in melee is a flaw. I again, again, but I I do truly believe I was one of the first people that did point this out. I do remember I got a controller for Christmas 2004. That was my first own GameCube controller. Uh, before that, we had like a lot of controllers at home that was like, you know, all siblings. But I got my first own controller and I played with this controller until shortly after Genesis 1. So I had this controller for almost five years. Then I swapped controller and I noticed the dashback issue, which probably points towards my first controller actually having good dashbacks early on i probably you know never it probably never crossed my mind 
But then when I played competitively, it never crossed my mind the dashback could be an issue because I never had an issue. If I like chain grabbed on FD, for example, I never messed it up. And then when I swapped controller, the more and more I played, I actually did feel the dashback was different. And at the time, I don't think it was known. Uh, I actually got uh, another Swedish smasher, AGP Anton. He used to like upload a lot of melee vids in like crazy quality for, for its time. He wanted to prove me wrong and said that all controllers were the same. So he was going to prove me wrong by opening up my controller and his. And that's when he realized the controllers were built uh, differently. I, I It probably is someone out there that noticed this earlier, but I actually don't know about anyone that didn't notice it earlier. And this was so, so many years in. So it's like another one of these, like, it is an issue, but for most most of the people, especially casuals, they will never notice it. Because even when I said it in 2010, uh, most competitive players did not believe that this could be an issue. Uh, but I will admit, it is a flaw, and I'm happy they changed it. Uh, but yeah, a lot of controllers have also built uh, like different over the times, right? So it became more of an issue with certain controllers than others, which... Uh, I will admit, that is a flaw with Melee, and I do hate how controllers matters so much. So, yeah, I, I think that's, uh, you know, a fair uh, criticism. And into the dash zone. For perspective, one frame in Melee, which runs at 60 frames per second, is 16 milliseconds. To really drive this point home, this counter is currently displaying a number from 1 to 60, representing the individual frames in this 60 FPS video. You have, at most, the time it takes for this counter to increase by 1 to complete this motion and not have it fuck up. I say at most because the odds of you beginning this motion right at the beginning of a frame are very low, so on average you'll have about half the time it takes for this counter to increase by one. All to do this. I'm dead fucking serious. Besides the one frame timing required for this action, your controller itself can affect how consistently you perform it. If you get lucky and happen upon an extremely rare controller with a malfunctioning analog stick box, yes, malfunctioning, this action becomes much easier to perform consistently. These, I mean, the the one percent. Like, it, it depends. I, I I feel like that's like, how do you say? Not being entirely honest about it. Like, you have control some controllers that are like really really high value. But yeah, maybe if you talk about a controller that is practically a hundred percent, that then it might be about uh, a one percent, uh, one percent ratio. I actually don't know exactly, but. Yeah, as I said, it, it is an issue that controllers do matter in Melee. But yeah, luckily, at least we can use UCF. But I mean, technically, that's not the official version of the game. So yeah, still, Va valid Rocket point. Controllers are coveted among top Melee players. And you might be familiar with this article about Armada dropping out of a tournament because he didn't have one of them to compete with. Why is Dash back? The, the thing is, that controller was literally broken. That controller was literally broken. But a lot of people take this very, very out of context and ar shitty articles like that. And then YouTube videos like this. Uh, no one of them even bothered asking me. No one of them bothered asking me. That controller was literally broken. It was not that, oh, I don't get 100% dashbacks. If I, if I didn't play tournaments due to a controller not having 100% dashbacks, as this guy even claimed himself like 1% of them, I would never ever enter a tournament. I never had a controller that gave 100% dashback. I probably, at best, had a controller with like 97 or 98. But some controllers I had to compete with had like, you know, 70. Sometimes they, you know, they get worse over time too. So even if they start off with like 95, it might quickly go down to like 80 or 75 back so important well in melee the difference between a successful dash back and an unsuccessful one can be the difference between punishing your opponent or getting punished yourself sometimes even resulting in losing a stock and it's going to come down to how consistently lot of the chain grabs at the stock and right now not looking good 
having a relatively normal, simple action that even casual players will perform have its input leniency be reduced so much as to be controller dependent is bad game design. And things like this are some of my biggest gripes with the game, as they throw a wrench into the competitive loop of studying, practicing, and application by making two of the steps dependent on external factors. Melee is a precise game in itself, and players' practice precision shouldn't be affected negatively by external factors such as controller differences. And most people agree with me, as a mod called UCF, or Universal Controller Fix, was made to increase Dashback's leniency from one frame to two, and thus make it less controller dependent. This mod is even used at some super majors nowadays. However, controllers can also affect things like wave dashing, ledge dashes, and shield drops, the latter of which is also adjusted with UCF due to its controller dependency. Manufacturing discrepancies cause the optimal inputs for these precise techniques to vary from controller to controller, and unfortunately, they're all extremely important in competitive play. It's gotten to the point that people have started selling controller modifications at a premium to file away at the perimeter of the analog stick gate to notch shield drop values for consistent shield drops, maximum length wave dashes, or the steepest possible angles for Fox and Falco's up B. These modifications are incredibly popular among mid and high level players, and I'd imagine that most, if not all, of the players on Melee's top 100 have these modifications on their controller. Among other modifications, such as removing springs in the triggers or soldering capacitors to the inner board of the controller to reduce things like snapback. While I personally don't have any problem with the actual practice of selling things like this, it certainly represents an issue with the way Melee is currently played compared to how it was meant to be played. And this- I mean, I, I personally hate the, the, the meant to be played thing. Like, so many games, sports, whatever you want to say, like, when people started playing football, they never imagined it would be, you know, the way it turned out to be. Street Fighter with combos, that was like not what they intended as well. So, even though I understand when people talk about that, I feel like it's mainly irrelevant. Like, if you want to play a game a certain way, then you should do that. And if you want to play it a different way, then play it that way. But the whole like, oh, it was not meant to be played this way, it's like... <sighs> yeah, I, I couldn't, you know, care less about that. But so far, so far, really the only thing I agree with is controller, controllers uh, madring is, is bad. But even in Smash 4, apparently, with perfect pivots, I didn't play Smash 4 competitively. I entered like three tournaments or something, uh, didn't even own the game. But even for Smash 4, like perfect pivots did uh, was controller dependent from what I've heard. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I've heard. And I don't see a reason why these good players would like you know, lie about that. So would you say that Smash 4 is a bad game as well then? Uh, like, I mean, personally, I am not a fan of the game, but I wouldn't say it's like a bad game, even though I don't think it's a good competitive game. Uh, like, I feel like the more you introduce to a game, the higher the chances that like some, some like external factors could be an issue. And especially if the developers have no you know, idea to change these things. Uh, that yeah, so far, yeah, I do agree controller issues are silly and it's bad and it's good that we have, you know, stuff like UCF that can uh, make external factors as small as possible. But the rest so far, I personally do not agree with at all, even though I can see, you know, the point of view for uh for most of it even though i don't agree at all this is where the issue lies with me as i said before these external elements on your controller shouldn't be a factor in how well and consistently you're able to perform actions in game admittedly some of these are issues that non-competitive players likely won't notice but because of the game's heavy use of these techniques in competitive environments the non-competitive players literally won't notice any of these things like, I, I know we've talked and I've pushed on this already, but like, 
I feel like people have this weird idea that casual players that know nothing about the competitive scene notice all of these things. Trust me, they, they don't. They don't. Maybe one in a million, but not really. Environments, it's worth bringing up as criticism to the overall game. You might find it odd to complain about these aspects of the game when the mods I mentioned fix these things, but to me that's the equivalent of the equally ridiculous mods will fix it mentality that's common to Bethesda games and bad PC ports of the modern era. Just because you can fix these issues via mods, it doesn't mean these issues are free from criticism. Plus, some competitive tournaments don't even run with fixes like UCF in place, and players looking to play the game on its native hardware might not even have access to these fixes at all. Such heavy importance on controllers is the sad reality of a game whose beautiful, complex, unique mechanics are often the result of player experimentation and engine manipulation rather than developer intention. But because a lot of these same or similar elements are also elements I've already listed as positives, I believe it's important to be objective and fair in explaining why mechanics that make Melee distinctive and fun also sometimes end up being a bother as well. Regardless- I mean, yeah, alright, yeah, I feel like we kinda keep repeating some of these points, but like, yes, controller issue is bad, but if, if some controller issues comes at the cost like, it's a, it's a cost of having all of these things that makes the game deeper and more fun for a lot of people, then I still think it's worth it. If it would be no controller issues whatsoever, but you remove all the movement, tech skill, and all of that, I think the game would be less fun, at the very least. Uh, you could argue that it's better because controllers don't matter, period, but I, I think that the price you would have to pay is very clearly not worth it of what was or wasn't intended. With the exception of Subspace Emissary and Brawl, which was a complete, interesting single-player experience with a story, actual levels, and a ton of cool bosses, I've never really been too big a fan of Super Smash Bros. single-player, and Melee is certainly no different. I don't think this is an uncommon opinion either. After all, Super Smash Bros. is a fighting game, or a party game depending on who you ask. It's largely meant to be played with another person or a group of people. To put it lightly, the single player options in Melee are adequate. Because what modes exist in Melee were, for the most part, done better in later installments whether it be for the increases in roster size and thus content and variety, the addition or expansion of certain modes, or the fleshing out of ideas featured in Melee. Event mode consists of 51 separate challenges, mostly shallow ones with gimmicks like your opponent being metal or big or small. These can be fun, but they end up feeling a bit samey after you've done a number of them. Classic mode makes its return from Smash 64, but unfortunately, many of the different levels in classic mode just... Yeah, honestly, I think Target Test in Melee is one of the most fun single-player Smash experiences. But, I mean, in general, sure, I guess it's like... a fair criticism for, like, the most part, but, like, single-player for most people... Even like in you know any of the later games, it's not really what Smash is about for most people. So to me, I can't even like personally care too much about it. Even though I, I'm someone that actually did play a lot of target tests in Melee. I think I'm like somewhere between top 15 and top 20 across all characters, like the total time. And I think Border Platforms in 64 was fun too, for example. And Target Test, of course. Uh, I mean, it's some single-player stuff that is kind of fun, but to me, like, it, it was never, like, in no Smash game, it was, like, when I think of Smash, it's not, like, oh, single-player. It's always, like, the multiplayer, right? It feel like random event mode matches strung together, where you're just fighting some random CPU taken from a small pool of characters with a gimmick attached, like them being metal or big or small. Stage 11 in particular, where you fight both Master Hand and Crazy Hand, is just Event 50. I'd imagine this was a lot of fun back in the day, but it's mostly lost its luster. 
especially when compared to the classic modes that came after it. Ultimate's classic mode, for instance, massively improves on Melee's formula by having a theme related to each individual character. For example, Pikachu's classic mode only involves Pokemon, whether it be Pokemon fighters or Pokemon stages, and the only items that drop are Pokeballs. There are also a good amount of final bosses rather than just the hands, which are always the final boss in Melee. The best part of Melee's classic mode, and the one thing it does better than Ultimate's, are the target test stages. Each individual character has their own unique target test, and they're designed around that particular character's moveset. Target test is completely absent from Ultimate's classic mode. Instead, all you've got is this shitty race to the finish kind of thing that's the same for every character, which is lame as fuck. Much like Classic Mode, outside of the two legitimately interesting Mario and Zelda levels, Adventure Mode just ends up feeling like a bunch of Event Mode matches stitched together, and some of them even straight up are Event Mode matches, meaning beyond those two levels I mentioned, there's not much difference between Adventure and Classic. Ultimate's Adventure Mode is called World of Light, and it has the worst fucking theme I've ever heard in a video game. And the biggest issue with this theme song is that it's everywhere. Everywhere in like so many like small variations to it. World of Light it. gives you a world map where you can pick and choose your gimmick fights while unlocking characters permanently. You can equip spirits that let you start out battles with certain items or give you things like attack and defense bonuses, on top of a dedicated skill tree consisting of a number of passive effects. These keep things relatively fun for a while with your spirits slightly altering how you fight, but even with these spirits, World of Light becomes a bit tedious, and unfortunately, the bosses of World of Light are also the same ones you fight in Classic Mode. Still, it ended up being a lot more fun than Melee's Adventure Mode to me. All-Star is an endurance mode where you fight through the game's roster while managing three heart containers that reset your percentage. This is an interesting concept if only for this metagame based around these three hearts, but like Adventure in Classic Mode, it ends with an exact copy of an event. I mean, they couldn't come up with something new? What were they- I mean, partly, like, this game had, like, what, 13 months of development period? Sure, you could argue that they should have taken more time, but I, I think it should be taken into account as well. And, like, I never, I never hear people like, you know, I haven't played Smash for years. I'm gonna play, you know, single player in any of the games. That That's never the thing, right? Whenever you run into, like, casual smash smashers they might you know play like at some type of like party or get together or whatever it is it's always that they play against people so i mean i feel like this portion of the video it's trying to make too much of an importance on the single player when 99.99% .99 of the players whether it's competitive competitors or casuals it's about the multiplayer, not the single player. So I feel like this portion of the video, it takes up, it makes a much bigger deal of single player than single player has been for any person practically on the planet. Are they short for time or something? On top of most of these ideas being better realized in later installments, the movement and speed that makes Melee so unique and enjoyable serve much less of a purpose when playing against computer opponents in these single player modes. Instead, on harder difficulties, much of the gameplay ends up revolving around cheesing or exploiting the questionable AI. Home Run Contest, a fan favorite, makes its debut in Melee, and it's just as good as ever. But just like fighting computer opponents in Adventure, Classic, and All-Star modes, it barely makes use of Melee's unique and fun mechanics. So Home Run Contest ends up just being something you'd rather play in one of the other installments, where you have a wider selection of characters. Uh, alright, let's just say I, I disagree. I'm not even the biggest fan of Home Run Contest, but I agree to disagree. <laughs> Barring nostalgia, single player is just something that was done much better in the game's following Melee, even if they're all just varying degrees of boring to me. It should come as no surprise that what I think Melee most excels at is its multiplayer. 
It's here that you can use the tools and techniques discussed in part 1 that make melee so fulfilling, technical, and cool to their utmost potential on human opponents. That's actually pretty sick. Supplemented by these movement options is the amount of hit stun most moves have. Indeed, attacks in melee have, on average, some of the most hit stun in the entire series, but not enough to be what I'd consider overbearing like in Smash 64. This lends itself well to extended combos that test a player's execution to perform, as well as the receiving player's ability to escape. Combos that, thanks to the aforementioned- I think that part that was mentioned there, like your ability to like escape combos, that's, uh, that's something that makes melee, at least as a competitive game, very, very interesting. Like in a lot of the Smash games, you don't get enough options to escape. And I know like, you know, in traditional fighters, for example, that's like, you know, more common how it works. But in Smash, I do think it's a very interesting concept. Like how much influence you can always have of making the combo harder. Like I mentioned this many times in the past, but like if you try to like combo, uh, you know, a top top player or you try to combo like a bad player, it's or even mediocre or even pretty good player. It's massive difference between each level, but that's like one of my core issues with ultimate that if I combo like Leo or I combo like a decent Lucina, I actually can't tell a difference. I can't tell a difference almost ever. It's like one key scenario sometimes that honestly don't take much knowledge whatsoever to understand. And it's basically the same thing. I think people put way too much like fake value on like oh how important di and sdi is in many scenarios but of course like i'm shaped by like how big these things are in melee but yeah it, it makes the game to me very beautiful like how important it is both as the person performing the type of combos and the person trying to escape it's it. done as well as things like platform and stage movement are extremely dynamic because of these fundamental differences in combo length Competitive Smash 64 and Melee players place the most emphasis on developing a strong punish game as opposed to strong neutral when first beginning their respective games. This trend continues into higher level play as well-practiced players can often take a stock in only one or two openings. Brawl and Beyond place more emphasis on neutral due to their smaller amount of hit stun and decreased speed, and thus shorter combos. While which you like more is down to preference, I think there's some- I mean, I feel like this is like a little bit trying to make it a bit too easy. Like, I, I do more agree with like the neutral to punish that is like in the newer games. Because a lot of like, in a lot of cases, the punish game is relatively weak. But neutral in melee for high level, it's still like such a massive, massive, massive part of the game. But of course, like, I do agree that newer players probably more easily become like attached to the punish game they see you know these type of things in highlights like oh the punish game in melee like it's very inspiring right but i do feel like a lot of people intentional or unintentional uh downplay like how important neutral game is in melee even like a lot of people that do follow melee a lot they, they have they they fall in too much to these like storylines narratives and whatnot uh but yeah to put it simple, just to make it clear, uh, neutral game, crazy, crazy, crazy important. You, you can have some people with really good punish game, but their neutral game is like not up to par and they clearly will have to pay the price for it. Something to be said about how much more creative, complex and entertaining combos are when you have more options to move and more time to follow up. One of the biggest differences between Ultimate and Melee, at least competitively, is how players of each respective game use and interact with platforms. In Melee, platforms are extremely versatile and mechanically deep. Many players base their entire playstyles around platforms and how they use them to their advantage. It's a reminder of how much more freeform, neutral, and combos are when platforms are fun and easy to move around on. In games like Ultimate, however, the same platforms that make Smash Bros. as a series so unique represent how the developers have chosen to limit the amount of options to move and interact. 
For example, the aforementioned removal of edge cancels for sick combos and otherwise impossible plays. Uh, ben Newman, thanks for 10 months. For quick counter attacks. Um, info regarding uh, set reviews you can find uh, below the stream. And the removal of nearly all possibilities to interact with them via wave landing and wave dashing. Whereas in melee, platforms are often used to stretch an advantage, play defensively in combos, to play neutral around, or simply just to mix your opponent up, it seems Ultimate's best players tend to actively avoid platform play due to their limitations on getting off of them and playing around them. Within competitive... Yeah, the... the, the... Yeah, I, I do agree with that part. I do agree with that part. It's just very hard to get off platforms in Ultimate, relatively speaking. You don't have Shield Drop, for example, and you don't have Wave Dash out of Shield. And then, yeah, you can't Edge Cancel either. So it's like, when you do Shield on a platform in Ultimate, it basically comes down to, like, Jump is the most common thing. Uh, sometimes people jump with an attack, but, I mean, if the opponent is on the ground, a lot of scenarios, it's not going to be super good. Uh, or, I guess, roll. So, in this part I do agree with a lot, uh, obviously. And since I do think the multiplayer and, like, how much freedom you have when you do play multiplayer, I, I to me, I feel like Smash is so much about multiplayer that I think it overrides, like, everything with single player. If you have a game, in your opinion, that single player would be really really good but it would be a bit worse in multiplayer then i would still say overall to me that's a worse game because smash is about to me and most people uh, about multiplayer but of course if you if you yourself put the most value on single player then sure the smash game with the better single player would be the better to you right but if we're gonna try to put it as like close to accurate as possible for most people, then it comes down to multiplayer for practically everyone. Some exceptions always exist, but still. Ultimate's fluctuating list of legal stages, I almost never see traditional three platform stages like Battlefield and Yoshi's Story played on. Instead, Ultimate players much more commonly opt for stages with fewer platforms. Final Destination or stages with their platforms so off to the side that they may as well not be there at all. Platforms and Ultimate, a platform fighting game, seem almost always disadvantageous to be on. There are rarely creative instances of use because of the lack of edge cancelable aerials. There are seldom instances of counter attacks on them because of the removal of shield drops and there are significantly less options to move and interact with them due to the nerf on wave dashing and wave landing. It seems that they more get in your way or fuck you over than anything else. In this way, platforms in Ultimate are more akin to stage hazards than an element of strategic and thoughtful play. While the movement issue is most pronounced on platforms, Many general advanced movement options that were in games like Melee, Brawl, and Smash 4 have been taken away and replaced with nothing. I very much for Dakus, I gotta say that I, I, I think that's a very cool tech that was uh, in Brawl and, you know, then later on in like PM and P+. Dakus is, is very cool. You actually never hear people say that that's a glitch, even though that might not have been intended. I actually have no idea if Sakurai or anyone else in charge ever made any official comments, but Dakus Dakus is a cool cool tech But that that's also something you can see where some people's bias come in Like they, they call like certain tech in melee a glitch something like L cancel even though it does exist in smash 64 Just way stronger than in melee like in smash 64 it reduces all lag while in melee. It's like half uh so even something that was like already in Smash 64, some people still call it a glitch. But something like Dacus, for example, that's never made an appearance prior to Brawl, the same people would never call it a glitch. Uh, yeah, Dacus, from what I've heard, it was in the 3DS version of Smash 4, but they patched it out. And apparently shield dropping was in the ultimate build at the Invitational, but it was also removed. Which, honestly, in both these cases, I feel like it's very sad, because, objectively speaking, 
Dacus being in Smash 4 or Shield Dropping being in Ultimate, that won't impact casuals. It won't impact casuals, but it will remove options from people that want to play the game uh, competitively. So I, I think it's very sad. Like some people, they have this weird belief that if you have added tech skill, it will ruin the experience for casuals. Even though like 99 point something percent of these people will never know about these, these things. And before some are like, oh, but I know about them. I've never gone to a tournament, but you still might watch tournaments and be involved in a competitive scene in that capacity. So I feel like it's a very flawed argument that added like tech skill and movement option destroy the experience for casuals because they don't even know about it. They don't know about it. have been taken away and replaced with nothing. I very often see uh, Grandma Poo Poo, think for nine months with Twitch Prime. Movement options that were in these past games. The removal of perfect pivots kind of makes it so we don't have that many options off of a platform. Without perfect pivoting, there's no micro movement. I feel like that's what people sometimes feel like with wave dashes and stuff as well, uh, like melee players. But yeah, I, I know Tweak have made some, some complaints regarding Ultimate, things he would want to see uh, changed. I mean, I, I, I didn't play Smash 4, but I, I could see the usage of perfect uh, pivoting, even though that also was controller dependent, apparently. And yeah, uh, the top one here, more movement tech. Yeah, 100% agree with. Yeah, wave dashing, edge cancels, ledge cancels. For a lot of people that play and watch, it makes it more interesting. It makes it more interesting. As you can't perfect pivot drop through a platform, it's kind of tough. But another thing that got taken out was shield dropping. Shield dropping, I tried living it, I tried a lot of different control schemes. It doesn't seem like they have shield dropping in this current build of the game. It's really tragic. It makes shooting on a platform feel kind of rough. These are understandable criticisms because who doesn't want a deeper and more freeform game to play? Who wants to be limited? A lot of people. A lot of people. Tons of people actually don't want a deeper and more freeform uh, options because they. Th th this we come back to this thing, right? We, we come back to this issue that if you do have the deeper and more free form, uh, like, you know, if that's available, then it means that you need to put effort in to learn it, right? And that's where we come back to like what was talked about earlier in the video, that they see something that is cool, but they can't replicate it immediately. And then they feel like it's an issue. Sure, you could argue that you could have like deeper and more freeform game with a lot of buffer, right? And I know some people support that, right? But even so, even so, just adding like the combo system as melee with more buffer would still make it much more complicated than a lot of people would be willing to like work with. At least that's my impression of it. Uh, further in how many ways they can move. Tomasuhiro Sakurai, the creator and director of the series, the answer is casual players. But the truth is... Wait, sad dog. It's so many people, so many people over the years. And you, sure, you can, you can try to argue that it's like people, you know, they're just like trolls online, but a lot of people truly feel like, you know, stuff like Wave Dash, Wave Lands, Edge Cancels, that it's not, like, it's, you know, glitch fests and they want like more simplified movement and stuff those people clearly exist those people clearly exist casual players don't give a fuck if these options wait what did it was that? fundamentally this is a casual game so i'd be grateful if people used to have fun with it without being scared i've created the game with that intent i mean again i i do not understand this type of like mindset that just because this is one way to play the game that you kind of like want to force it on other people. Like, Sakurai tested with Brawl, adding tripping and stuff. Like, Brawl was basically so different to Melee that it was like a clear path towards like, we what Melee became for some people, we don't want that with Brawl, right? 
That was basically what Sakurai said. But you still saw a lot of people that wanted to play Brawl competitively. And casual players, if they do play against competitive players in Brawl, would still lose badly. Unless you introduce, like, rolling a dice. And that's, you know, most of, the, like, the core game plan. Or, you know, gameplay. Then it will still be these gaps. Like... You can play football casually, and you can play it, you know, in the World Cup. It's always going to be levels to, you know, these type of games. So, yeah. But I, I think it's also important, and something that it kind of feels like Sakurai misunderstand, in my opinion, is that truly casual players and truly competitive players they are not for the most part really going to interact much sure it's a bit more these days with online play but let's be honest ultimate online is so bad that like a lot of people even you know give up on it or want to give up on it uh but especially like in the earlier days before online you know gaming was like as big of a deal casual players and competitive players never interacted with each other casual players play casual with you know their friends competitive players played more competitive matches against other competitive players like the overlap between these two is not that big by any any means but the truth is casual players don't give a fuck if these options are in the game how most all right we agree we agree the casual players yes they don't give a fuck if they're in the game because they don't know about it i hope he says that of them probably don't even know they exist let's go all right we're finally on the same page we're finally on the same page okay we've been on the same page for a few things but we've also been not on the same page for a lot of things but i'm happy i'm happy he stated that at least so we do agree with like one big deal here in my opinion yeah the whole idea that casuals can't enjoy the games because of like, you know, certain tech. Just a lie. Casual players will enjoy it just the same. The only thing these oversimplified mechanics do are negatively affect the people who want a deep competitive experience, which is supposedly the audience the game was made to cater to. Well then, please enjoy the very first. <laughs> Do you see Lucky? It, it reminds me of uh, the team match. People that saw this event, they, they know what I'm talking about. Because of these differences, on top of things like how different every character is comboed due to Melee having the widest range of weight, fall speed, and gravity values in the series, much of Melee's depth comes from how much there is to learn about and exploit how each individual character can move to either combo or play neutral while Ultimate's depth is instead more based on its huge roster size, comprised of more simple characters and mechanics. This and the sheer amount of characters to choose from are a huge reason as to why games like Ultimate are much, much better games for casual play. The limitations in movement and combos, as well as the copious buffer, make the game more accessible and intentionally narrow the- Wait, intentionally limit movement and low hits don't narrow the gap. Uh, yeah, but like, again, like, how does that make it better for casuals? They don't play with the pros. And limited movement options, they don't know about the Wait, now I feel like we're like, unless I'm misunderstanding something here, I feel like we're kind of back to like a weird part of this video. Because it was mentioned earlier that the casual players don't knew, know about the, the secret secret tech right but here's like intentionally limited movement why would that make the game better if they don't even know about it in the first place and they don't really interact with like the competitive players the more characters i do agree with from like a casual standpoint if you don't know what makes characters unique if you don't know what makes characters deep then you're only going to look for a quantity and not quality so i do agree from a casual standpoint more characters is better in that regard but then I, I personally would argue that that's only on the surface. Uh, which, to be fair, is important for, you know, a lot of people. Since not everyone is going to, you know, play one game, like, an absurd amount. Insane amount of characters means everyone will find a character they enjoy playing. Honestly, I haven't found a character I enjoy in Ultimate nearly as much as anyone in Melee. 
<laughs> even like honestly some of the ultimate players like other that, that came from like smash 4 and stuff have had an issue as well and it's probably partly because a lot of them are like quite similar and like the lack of like you know movement micro spacing tools and so on but yeah for casual casuals yeah they mainly care about quantity which i personally think is a side direction but i i understand why it's a thing the gap between those who want to play for fun and those who want to play the game competitively just like soccer i wanted well, because of the extremely tight, precise controls that take practice to even get used to, smaller roster and somewhat flat single player modes, Melee is somewhat of a casual, unfriendly experience compared to later games. The breadth of difficult techniques characters can use to deepen and enhance their play in competitive environments instead make it more suited to tournament play. Of course, this leads us to the question of balance. How balanced is Melee? I've already done a pretty in-depth look at how many characters are viable in Melee, but when discussing balancing in relation to Smash's more contemporary installments, Melee, perhaps surprisingly, is right up there with Ultimate. Now, it'd be un- Alright, I, I, uh, I was actually not sure what to expect here, since this video has been like... a, a little bit of a roller coaster, in my opinion. So I actually was not really sure what was going to be said here, but Melee, Melee actually is more balanced than people give it credit for, but of course, like, Melee does have quite a lot of bad, bad, bad characters too. But even some of the bad characters can do way better than people think, it's just that most good players don't see any reason to play them, which makes sense, which makes sense. But it is much more balanced than people give it credit for. But of course, not as balanced as Ultimate. But I think I think it's partly Ultimate getting patched, and I do think the game, since it does have way less like movement options, it has not as much like freedom. In bad positions, you have way more options to work around stuff. Like if you're off stage in Ultimate at low percent, you basically will always come back. Even as a mid-level player, you will pretty much always come back. And I feel like Ultimate has a lot of these like much more black and white scenarios. And it's very likely, or it should be very likely, in my opinion, uh, that the game ends up being more balanced. I guess with, like, Brawl, you know, mainly Meta Knight, and I guess partly Ices, kind of ruined that. And Smash 4. Smash 4 seemed, like, relatively balanced before DLC when, like, Diddy and Sheik uh, got nerfed. But I, I just feel like the, the core designs, like, of Ultimate, more black and white decision-making less extreme like situations when you're off stage or like in disadvantage for example i feel like it does more likely lead to more balanced uh balanced roster but personally i don't think the price you pay for it is justified now it'd be unfair to fully compare melee's nearly two decade long meta balancing to ultimates a game with a young meta and more patches and characters on the yeah yeah the, the 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 difference in how long the game has been out also is very important not that i do think ultimate will unless some new dlc comes comes out and like becomes absolutely busted it probably will be more balanced in terms of how many characters but also the roster is so big so partly you should count it like percentage wise would be more fair but yeah, the fact that the game is so much younger as well, uh, it is an important aspect to bring up. So it's good that it was brought up. In a way, but it's entirely safe to say that there are no completely meta-centralizing characters like Meta Knight in Brawl and Bayonetta in Smash 4. Of course, Fox is very popular, you see him very often in competitive melee, but in no way do his in-game tools and results come even close to Meta Knight's nearly uncontested dominance or Bayonetta's ban-worthy superiority and ease of use. Fox mains make up 26% of melee's top 100, which is admittedly a little crazy. However, Fox is similarly overrepresented in all levels of play, all the way down to low level as evidenced by character surveys and data taken from other sources. He makes up 21% of all players who participated in ranked play on Smash Ladder, 
a site for dedicated netplay matchmaking mostly consisting of low and mid-level players. Because anyone can partake in ranked play and because netplay is how most people play melee nowadays, we can reasonably infer that this is roughly indicative of the character representation among melee's cumulative player base. But in spite of this, last year Solo Fox McCloud won the same amount of tournaments as Falco, and two much less popular characters, Pikachu and Falcon, won. Within Melee's current metagame, which commonly holds around 20 combined majors and super majors a year, Fox is lucky if he gets a few victories at most, and the scene hasn't seen a true Fox main dominate since Leffen's short stint in 2015. Not exactly characteristics of a fighter that's overpowered or meta-centralizing. Instead, for the past half decade, Melee's meta has been ruled by Hungrybox, who plays Jigglypuff, a character with a losing matchup to Fox, and Armada. I mean, I still argue that can be very debate debated, but I'm not gonna say it's wrong necessarily, but I still believe that Puff might win the matchup. I think it's like, it's close enough where it's hard for me to say personally. Uh, I just, I just gotta say that the, the the fact, like people present it as a fact that Puff guaranteed loses, and I'm personally not convinced. And I wouldn't say it's a hot take that I was the best versus Puff with Fox, but yeah, I, I could see either character having a, an edge. It's hard to say. A Peach main with a Fox secondary that he uses for Hungry Box. You see Fox often in Melee not because he's overpowered or over-centralizing, but because he's so popular at every level of play. I'd argue that this massive amount of representation compared to the number of tournaments he wins, and has won for the past 10 years, actually lends more credence to the fact that Fox is perhaps less good than what the majority of players give him credit for, and at the very least, not meta-centralizing in any way. Now, I'm not claiming Melee is the most balanced game in the world, but among Melee's viable selection of characters, competitive Melee is balanced just fine. There are very few horrible matchups among these viable characters, and any of these characters are capable of winning a major. Especially if you're mid-level, low-level, or pure shit, you can find success with nearly any character on the roster. And it's yep. not until you actually become a semi-decent player that this list of viable characters even remotely matters. I'd be remiss not to mention Melee's online solution, a modded version of the GameCube and Wii emulator Dolphin that's been optimized for Melee, aptly called Faster Melee, specifically tailored and adjusted for net playing over the internet with other people. Netplay is optimized to an insane amount, and given a proper setup, you can actually play the game with others over the internet with less input lag than on its native hardware. In fact, less lag than Ultimate has offline. That's like I know I know that's the truth, but that's actually absurd if you think about it. That's actually absurd if you think about it. I'm happy it was brought up, but this was never included earlier in the video. And we'll see if this is like brought up more. It's not that much left of the video, but to me, like, I feel like an absurd amount of input delay. That's also like objectively a bad thing. Uh, but yeah, let's see if it's talked about more. Of course, you'll probably have to procure the game through questionable means if you want to play the game on PC. But it goes without saying that this is by far the best online the series has to offer, and it's not even close. For example, on an absolutely perfect connection, Online Ultimate has a minimum of 12 frames of lag, while Melee's netplay can be changed to your liking by manually adjusting what's called buffer. One buffer is equal to a quarter of a frame of additional lag, and you add one buffer for every 8 ping between you and the other player to keep the connection stable. Because Faster Melee alone has less lag than playing on a GameCube or Wii, to most people, 6 to 8 buffer is considered a good connection because it's roughly equivalent to the lag experienced while playing Melee on a CRT. To put this into perspective, the minimum 12 frames of lag in Ultimate is equal to 42 buffer. Not double, not triple, 
not even quadruple, but five times the amount of lag on a solid netplay connection. Minimum. I want to emphasize that I'm not just saying all of this just to shit on Ultimate. I think Ultimate is a good game, and it's actually decently fun to watch, too, which isn't something I could have said in good faith about Smash 4. The game does better than Melee in some areas, most notably character balance, the amount of viable characters, controls such as customization and non-controller dependency. I do think controller customization is a good one that was introduced in Brawl. Uh, yeah. I mean, it would have been good if it was in Melee 2. Like, I do believe everyone can get used to the controllers in Melee, but of course, uh, we all have personal preference. Uh, so, yeah, controller customization, I would say that's like one of the best things introduced post-Melee. And single player, as I've already mentioned, many Melee players are able to enjoy both games concurrently, including myself. But Ultimate, as well as Brawl and Smash 4, have undeniable restrictions on gameplay that hinder the depth of play that Melee has. These criticisms are instead primarily to explain how Melee still holds up and sometimes greatly exceeds these games in certain areas, even 20 years and 3 mainline releases later. Today, much of the discourse in the community ends up being based around the two Smash games that currently have active, healthy scenes, Melee and Ultimate. Melee, in some aspects, has mechanics that are almost egregiously complex and finicky, some requiring physical controller modifications to perform consistently. Conversely, Ultimate sometimes feels needlessly simplistic, limiting, or just strange in its design philosophies. But because of these differences and how much more it has to offer in terms of characters, stages, music, and quality single player content, Ultimate ends up being, holistically, a solid game in its own right that will appeal to many more people, just not one with the level of interactivity, freedom, and depth that Melee has competitively, which happens to be the small part of Smash that I enjoy the most. There are more ways to move in Melee, more ways to combo, more ways to interact, and, ironically, despite the difference in roster size, debatably more ways to play. To me, this makes it more fun to play and watch. However, beyond these competitive-centric criticisms, this begs the question. If you're not interested in what Melee has to offer at its fullest potential, is it even worth playing? To me, the answer seems clear. No. Melee isn't worth your time beyond the novelty of having played it if you're not interested in learning, practicing, and implementing what makes the game unique. In fact, if you play it without that desire, you might find yourself frustrated by its antiquated controls and relatively small roster and amount of stages. If you are interested and willing to invest the time, however, what awaits you is the best, deepest, and most rewarding competitive experience the series has to offer. Is Melee one of my favorite games as a whole? No, but damn, do I love this small part of it. Yeah, I feel like uh, th th this video was like a roller coaster. Roller coaster. Started off with a lot of like hot takes and a lot of things I did not agree with. But it was uh, some stuff in the, the later third or something that I started to agree with like a little bit more. Some uh, some important stuff that was brought up. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a roller coaster. Yeah, I do agree the final point was like relatively fine. Like, if you have no interest whatsoever in, like, the competitive, you know, scene, uh, I can understand the appeal with, like, more characters and more stages and so, like, yeah. I, I can totally understand that. I can totally understand that. But, yeah. E even so, like, maybe not with Ultimate uh, these days. It's hard for me to say, actually. But I know, I do know, like, a lot of my casual friends when it came to Smash, 
they did enjoy melee more than brawl even as casuals that never learned about any secret tech they they knew about like okay they knew about some of them eventually due to me playing competitively but they never tried to learn and incorporate any of it and i know like i think all of them actually enjoyed melee over brawl uh it's been so many years now though so i can't entirely remember what they said at the time but at first glance i i can understand if someone that don't, do not want to really invest into the game if ultimate would be more more appealing but i also feel like the the competitive side of melee is so big that it just feels wrong to call it like a small portion because that small portion is just such a big and deep thing that is like very very endless but yeah, roll, roll, roller coaster for sure. 